The following contains spoilers to the holdovers, so please return once you've seen the film, if you would prefer that. If you do not mind spoilers, or you have seen the film, you may proceed. The Holdovers is not a traditionally crowd-pleasing film, but it lays a lot of the complex emotional truth that affects everyday life as a human being. Armed with deeply flawed characters who end up changing by the end, Alexander Payne hits another home run with this 1970s film grain take on a New England boarding school over winter break. I liked how this film organically makes the characters learn more about each other and how they slowly reveal themselves with their company. The walls are up at the beginning, but they come down when they're essentially forced to deal with the reality of their lives. Dominic Sessa as Angus Tully was very good. His character was well written. Most of his rich and privileged peers are so used to getting what they want that everything revolves around them. You can also tell immediately that he's a main character. He speaks intelligently for his age and knows references that seemingly go over his peers' heads. He verbally bites back at people who wrong him. He will not punch down. Socioeconomic factors play a part in this film because it focuses on those who were not born with the silver spoon in their mouth. We're not going down to the bottom rung of society, but we're looking at those that are trying to break through into privilege. Paul Hunnam was a student at Barden, and he stays there as a teacher, and he never graduated from Harvard. He had his chance to break through when he was a young man, but it was the other rich and privileged student who robbed him of his chance to be become the person that he wanted to be. This is why he's merciless in his teaching and will not give any student a break, even if their parents donate large sums of money to the school. That doesn't make a difference to him. Mary Lamb, who lost her son Curtis in the Vietnam War, is the most tragic character. She and her son did what they were supposed to do. She got a job at Barden so that her son could get the best education. He joined the army to hopefully return and get his college paid by the GI Bill. Curtis could not avoid enlistment as he couldn't afford to go to college. This hits the hardest when she talks about what happened to her son's path to something better. We all realize that they did nothing wrong, but she has to live without her son for the rest of her life. The only thing that may have prevented this is if she could afford to send her son to college instead of being drafted. Fortunate Son by Credence Clearwater revival as overplayed some of you may think it is or maybe too on the nose for media based in this time period is what this film covers when it comes to Mary and her son Curtis. She doesn't appear sad all the time as she's trying to adjust and get through life without her son. Despite having a tough exterior she breaks a little when she starts drinking and hearing the song that her and her son enjoyed together. I think her loss is understated as there's more than what's said when you lose a child. The main thing is the potential for a life cut too short. She has no husband and no other children, and we don't really see much of her life or her as a person beyond a grieving mother and a lunch lady at a boarding school. We later find out that she has a sister who is expecting, and that gives her a little hope. We don't get to see too much of Mary when Tully and Paul are in Boston. Paul becomes a father figure to Tully. He treats him him and the other holdovers more like children at first, but over time, he talks to him like an adult, which is what Tully's missing. There's a deep insecurity that Tully has that's no fault of his own. He truly feels alone as he has no functional father and no mother that sticks up for him and would rather forget about anything associated with Tully's father. Tully didn't know that he shouldn't hold on to the memory of his father or hold out hope that his father would get better. Tully needed that closure, but his mother denied it to him. However, I don't think anybody is at fault here. The father can't help that he's stricken with schizophrenia. The mother cannot help that she reacted in the way that she did, as it reminds her too much of her previous life that was marred with domestic violence. Could she have been there for her son? Of course, but to her, it's asking her to go back to the past that she wants no part of. No one is healing in this situation, because that takes time and effort. This film fits right into Alexander Payne's filmography, with its 
its flawed characters and nothing ever going right for them. There may be some moments where something good happens, but reality hits and it takes them right back to where they were. Two steps forward and one step back. Or sometimes it's one step forward, but two steps back, such as life. The film was shot on digital, but it looks like it was shot on film. There's added grain and scratches to the image quality. The holdovers fits right in with the 1970s. While watching it, I was thinking of five easy pieces, especially when it came to the on-the-road scenes with its close-ups in the car. We don't feel plopped into the time period. This film takes the time to appear naturalistic. It's just a welcome, atmospheric element. Paul Hunnam is that guy that can't move on with his life. It's reasonable, since he doesn't have a college degree, and usually teachers must have one to be employed. He also talks about working on his monograph on some ancient history topic that he keeps on saying that he's working on. There is something that is holding him back from pursuing it. It did not appear explicitly mentioned, but it could be a combination of a few things. Writing original work or doing anything outside of work hours can be exhausting. It doesn't take much effort to get trapped into doing something easy and mindless rather than something fulfilling and requires one's full attention. Or it could be some fear of notoriety because he lied to a former Harvard classmate about what his life had become. If he writes a book and it becomes successful, then there may be more of a magnifying glass on his life. The fear that Paul has is probably what a lot of people feel if they don't believe they've accomplished what they've wanted in life. It's funny how he offers the book meditation Meditations by Marcus Aurelius to both Tully and Mary, considering that this book is often cited regarding Stoicism. I'm not going to go into this that much, but if Paul read Meditations, he would be making more progress on that monograph instead of talking about it, as life is short and you have control over things that you can control. Alexander Payne runs it back again with tragically funny characters dealing with the harsh realities of life in The Holdovers. Now, this is a Christmas film that I can get behind. These characters were three-dimensional and felt real. It's hard to replicate that and still be entertaining, as a lot of our lives are boring, or they can at least feel that way at times.